Now, of course, these elections pose serious questions for Labour too. In Scotland, the SNP romped home with nearly 38% of the vote, Labour falling back to fifth place. In Wales, a strong showing by the Brexit party in Plaid Cymru relegated Labour to fourth place. And closer to home, in Jeremy Corbyn's own Islington constituency, there was a 21% swing from Labour to the Liberal Democrats. Joining us from Hay on Why is Barry Gardner, the Shadow International Development Secretary. Uh, welcome, Mr Gardner. Thank you very much for joining us from that rather soggy scene there. So has the Labour Party changed its stance on Brexit today as a result of these results? We've heard from John McDonnell. He seems to be suggesting there should be a second referendum. Look, um, the government has clearly failed to secure a deal that is acceptable to Parliament. We're now in the situation where the uh, leadership contenders have made it very clear that they're prepared to countenance a no deal. There is no commission going to be in place in the European Union until November. So there, there is nobody to negotiate with before the date upon which we would leave. In those circumstances, Labour will follow through on the commitment that we made at uh, our conference in September last year. And that is because we are now facing that imminent threat of a no deal Brexit, then we have to now say that it's time for a public vote, whether tell that me, is as a general tell me about or whether that is as a second referendum. All right, well, we need that to stop a no deal. Ah, OK. So, so you are prepared to go for that because last year you said a second referendum would be a betrayal of democracy. Look, uh, I, I have said consistently that a, going against the first referendum that we are, the, the referendum that we had in 2016, um, would really be to seriously jeopardise people's trust in our democratic system. I still believe that, but the point is this, we are now faced with the, the serious threat of no deal. That's why in September last so, year okay. we spent six hours locked in a room together and we came up with that composite motion and that's no, what no, we well, agreed. It's we must now deliver on that because that's what we promised. Well, no, it's important though that you now see circumstances in which uh, a second referendum might well be necessary and even desirable to avoid no deal. Let's just talk about but, but look, the if, position if, of Jeremy yeah, Corbyn. But if you because go back, sorry, if I can, if, if I can just briefly, just point if, out if I may you, ask you, if you, if you, yeah, no, indeed. If, if you go back to, to the 2017 uh, manifesto, you'll find there that we set out this very clearly. It was that there we as a possibility. The referendum result, but but not not to accept a no deal and not to accept the, the deal that was going to undermine jobs and security and our just-in-time supply chain let's, and our security as a nation. That is what is now clearly right. manifesting itself because of the incompetence of this government and the failure of the Conservative Party to let's, take the interests of the country first but to put their own interests as a party first. All right, well, let's talk about your interests as a party and, and in particular the position of Mr Corbyn. There's been Quite a bit of uh, recrimination, for example, on social media, on Twitter today, people talking about a possible coup. Um, you've had the worst results in Labour in terms of the share of the national vote since 1910, uh, following on pretty dire local election results. Why isn't the position of your leader coming under question now? Look, the, the clear lesson from yesterday is that the public wants clarity rather than complexity. Do you think, do you think Jeremy Corbyn's forward, policy has it, given it, them clarity? I, I'll, I'll, I'll try and answer your question in my words. Um, the, what we've tried to do is we have tried to set out a process and that process was to try and honour the referendum result by negotiating with the government to achieve an acceptable deal. We couldn't do that. The government kept their red lines. They would not move. As a result of that, one Prime Minister, well, the second Tory Prime Minister has now gone, uh, and we're in a situation where all the leadership contenders, who won't be in place, let's face it, until the end of July, will have no time to negotiate anything different before the new date of us leaving on the 31st uh, of October. In Thank this you. situation, we are following through on the promise we made in September. Barry Gardner, thank you so much for joining us. So, how